And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Zedjuani elusives. So what we're going to be doing here is taking our championless elusives deck that I think is pretty strong and a really good budget option and adding in some champions. Because I know that some of y'all have asked about like, you know, how can we play this deck with some champions? Like, you know, enjoy playing champions. So that's what we're going to be doing. Kind of got the idea for, for doing this with um, Zed and Sejuani yesterday. We played against somebody playing Zed and Sejuani in this kind of deck. Um, and Sejuani, I mean, it just makes sense because Sejuani is just an amazing card and it's just very, very powerful. Um, you know, being able to give uh, anything Frostbite vulnerable, you know, you can give, if they have like an elusive blocker, you can give that vulnerable and have Sejuani challenge that while your other elusives get in the damage. Or if they have something with like one health or two health, you can give that vulnerable and have your overwhelm do the rest of the damage. Um, so yeah, Sejuani makes a lot of sense. You know, even better with Jewel Protector giving up plus three, plus three, <laughs> right? Like just make that bigger um, <clears throat> and everything like that. So we're going to play it with, with some champions, Zed and Sejuani. Uh, you may remember the last time that we played this deck, we had one Twin Disciplines, one Take Heart. Moving that to two Twin Disciplines because Twin Disciplines, I think, is better with Zed than Take Heart is. Um, and then basically to make room, we took out the Shared Spoils. So um, took out the Shared Spoils and the Solitary Monks. Um, that's that's like how we got room for the Zeds and the Sejuani. And then cut one at Winf Winfair Hatchling for the third Sejuani. All right, so here we go. We're going to name this Zedjuani Elusive. Let's give this a try. Uh, let's we're gonna go use like the the first you know the original board sleeve poro bringing it back hey gigakuma welcome so here we go zedjwani Okay, playing against probably the most uh, popular deck right now, Sejuani Miss Fortune. And... Hmm. I'm going to replace these two, even though I, I don't mind either card. I kind of like both of them, but they're just kind of expensive. Ugh. This is not a good deny matchup. Omenhawk? No Omenhawk. This is the worst card of my deck for this matchup. So it makes sense that after we mulligan, it's the first card that shows up. Everything's better with company. Says you. I do not want to see Make It Rain. That card is very good against Green Glade Duo. I also don't really want them to pass, because if they pass, that probably means they have Fury of the North. I don't want to. I don't want to face Fury of the North. So do I attack into Fury of the North with the Zed? I don't know. It's not like blocking with Zed's very good. So I guess I might as well. Maybe they don't have it. No. Oh, they didn't have it. Darn. That was the best make it rain they could they could get. Mm. 
Okay, so I have to use two Mega Rains to kill my Zed, but also took out an Elixir of Iron as well. Dang, the 4 4 Misfortune. Yuck. So this is 8 damage coming in. Uh, I guess so. Could be a lot of damage. They're at 13. Yeah, this should. Yeah, this will be lethal. If they don't, they have to have another make a rain. They have to have their third make a rain, right? Because they don't really play elusives. They don't have the mana for Sejuani for Frostbite. You've got dangerous eyes. I like that. So I think this should be game. <sighs> they have the third Mega Rain? No. It's okay. <clears throat> they didn't hit both Green Glade duos. They had to hit both Green Glade duos. Make it interesting, Tommy. Or even a, a Green Glade duo plus a sh plus the Omen Hawk actually would have been annoying as well. So that was that was actually just the best Mega Rain for us. Man, so we go turn two Green Glade duo and it survives three Make It Rains. Wow, they had all three Make It Rains. We got to survive that. Yeah, that Mega Rain was perfect for us. Okay. One and oh. Good quick win. Don't play against Karma Lux too often. Right now. All right, Mulligan the six mana card. I like this one, two, three. Good opening curve. So would have rather had the attack token turn one, turn three. Definitely, like turn yeah, turn one, turn three would have been great to have the attack token, but that's my resting face. Um, good, especially the third turn. So what are we gonna do? Maybe we just play Green Glade Duo next turn. Get another one of those in play. Not the challenger. Uh, the scout. The scout's annoying too. Um. Alright, so next turn we'll have four mana. So maybe I should go Shadow Assassin this turn and then next turn play Green Glade Duo and Conspirator. Okay, Will of Ionia is a good draw for um, turn five. Uh, Scout's annoying. A lot of damage.
If this works out, this is 13 damage, putting them down to four. If this works out. Their plan may be Radiant Guardian. You know, like attack right away, I block. They go Radiant Guardian. Then I try to bounce Radiant Guardian, but then they have single combat. That'd be, that'd probably be the worst for me to see is Radiant Guardian plus single combat. Slow down, will you? Okay, good. Nine mana? These three cost ten together, unfortunately. I walk your path alone. Wish we had one more mana. We could have Twin Disciplines and Will of Ionia. In case we needed them. We have to play something. I don't want to just go to combat and attack for seven with the elusives. We definitely want to be attacking for eight. Judgment. I would like them to play Judgment, because then we'll just bounce. <clears throat> nope. That's not good. Great lines. Doesn't really make sense bouncing. I think, I guess I just let this happen, I guess. None of my lines really make sense to do. I feel like neither of these cards make sense to play, so I guess we just let it happen. Unless I want to bounce my own Devori Conspirator and then replay it and everything. No, I don't I don't think that's worth playing Twin Disciplines as extra three damage. Everything's better with company. 
says you. I don't think that's a very good play. I think it's more a more valuable card than that. Or potentially can be. We have a bunch of good finishers here. You know, Windflayer Hatchling's a good finisher. Sejuani's a good finisher. Played one Will of Ionia, they gotta have another one, like just to start. They had to have a Will of Ionia for the Sejuani. It's just the starting point. Um They do have eight mana, so then I, then I could do the twin disciplines for the extra three damage. Take nine. Follow me. All right, Zedjuani Elusive is two and zero. Oh. Looking strong. Looking strong, because yeah, we still had so much gas at hand. With the Windfair Hatchling, another Jewel Protector. You know, the Will of Ionia. Twin Discipline, we still had a ton of gas in hand. Uh, this isn't really a new deck. I mean, uh, Kinku Elusives has been around for a few months. This is kind of just a new take on it with playing Sejuani in here. All right, champion -less. Yuck. <laughs> I mulliganed you for a reason. Alright, well, Life Blade gets a lot better when you have Jewel Protector. Um, not having anything to do on turn one or turn two is not ideal. So, um, Life Blade is great against Undying, especially with, especially with uh, Jewel Protector. The Undying is something that you know is a is a slow burn. So, 
We could do like Chronicler of Ruin. Ah, Glimpse Beyond. Yeah, just like wearing a tie, just this is how I like to present myself. I I um, like how I look more with a dress shirt and a tie than just a t-shirt. I like the professional look. Hey, Danielle. Take it. Yeah, Zed, Zed's just a really good champion. Yep. Definitely a good champion to have. And plus, this art is awesome. This leveled up art. Really cool. That's pretty epic. Remember the fallen. So I'm a little worried about Ruination, right? Like the, the, their deck's definitely a Ruination deck, and they've been playing super, super slow. Kind of seem like they're setting up Ruination. So let's just go to attacks. I'd, I would be I'd feel bad if I play Life Blade or Sejuani before you know before attacks and then they go Ruination right here. Stand strong. We're in the we're in the driver's seat. Yeah, I, I think that's what they're really honestly trying to do is pass me play stuff, they play Ruination. Ooh. Well, that's a good card to draw. They never stop. Against Ruination. I think it's for sure Ruination also. definitely played the the previous turn before we had that deny I definitely played that correctly um, I think a lot of people would want to just slam something down we have we had so many tempting things to play but yeah that was like the, the one card we need to definitely play around all right uh, Vi Heimerdinger Ezreal it's a pretty good deck this is a good test that we're gonna have um. Hmm. Do I want to go Blade Scout into Conspirator? That's kind of a lot of work for just some two power stuff. Definitely wish we were attacking turn one, turn three again. Really wish we were attacking turn one, turn three. This card, you really want to attack turn three with this card. 
Um, I'm gonna get rid of the conspirator. Ugh, get another one. Well, this was not the best mulligan. Not the best mulligan. Good job, fair Vlad. You're, you're in gold. Good job. And yeah, Danielle got to platinum. Also, great job. know what I'm going to be doing here. The order rewards its faithful. Don't really love my options. play this thing to block these pickpockets. Sure. Still definitely blocking pickpockets. We're gonna hopefully have Sejuani take out... Don't want any trouble. The goal is to have Sejuani take out Solitary Monk. And yeah, I could grow Sejuani, but... Chance they bounce Sejuani. I like getting some big elusives, like especially Conspirator, where we can have Conspirator pick Jewel Protector back up. Bow to no one. I do like that quite a bit. Uh, what decks do you recommend to push through high diamond? Um, yeah, that's uh, as far as the, the deck code. Let's see, that's the deck list. There's the link to the code on the side um i don't think that there's necessarily it's just such a hard question to answer like what do you recommend for ranking through high diamond because there's dozens of decks you can play and different people play different things better and everything like that um basically anything like this deck is great if you want to play this deck this deck is is great you can definitely rank up with this deck. Um, lots of decks can work. Great hand for them, though. GG's. A solitary monk dominated this game, that's for sure. Sure. 
Maybe I should go Green Glade Duo with that one. We're gonna have eight mana next turn. Where I could go have Sejuani and Duo, and I wouldn't have to pick something up. I probably should have gone Sejuani with that one. Or sorry, sorry, uh, Green Glade Duo with that one. Yeah, I, sh I should have. Pain is nothing. Yeah, I, I really should have chosen uh, Green Glade Duo. That was a big mistake. Seven out of eight? Yuck. We're not looking too, too bad, though. I need to just play more defensive now. Say no to buy. I could bounce the solitary monk. And then they couldn't really replay it. Maybe I should bounce solitary No, because now if I bounce solitary monk, then Ezreal gets to hit me. So I bounce Solitary Monk, Ezreal hits me, Vi dies, no, maybe I bounce Ezreal? Bounce Ezreal, I go down to three, if the last cards get excited, I lose, but if it's not, I have, um, Oh, Discipline of Force kills me too. Dang it. Ugh. Mm. Left me alive. That was a mistake. Yeah, should have got rid of that solitary monk. Man, so close. I could could have won that one. I basically I didn't want their I didn't want them to level up like the problem okay so basically if I if I bounce the four three they hit me with 
uh, you know, they get to hit me with Ezreal, create a Mystic Shot. Mystic Shot kills my Elusive, and it levels up Ezreal. Like, that was the problem, is that Ezreal was going to level up. And I didn't want... Um, I didn't want them to have a leveled up Ezreal with me being at 6. I was worried about that. But... But then again, they couldn't. They couldn't like replay. The, then like solitary. They would have solitary monk one card. They couldn't replay the one card, or they couldn't replay solitary monk because I would bounce the Ezreal. Should have just gone that way. Ugh. I could have had that. It's a risk going down to three, and it was a risk that I lost. Dang. That close to winning that game and potentially having a 5 0. You can see the Nebastian border from here. Pledge yourself to the shadows. Why are we close to attack first? Basically turning the escaped abomination into a 4-2 means it can't block Zed profitably. All right, so either I can either let them level up Callista or not attack with these things. I mean, I guess I just let them level up Callista, right? <clears throat> it brings back Ravenous Butcher right now. If they block with an escaped Abandon, which I guess they'd probably block here, it'd bring back a 4-4. Four -four. Um, I don't know. I mean, they're, they're just block with these things and draw cards. Maybe it's better just to attack here. Yeah, yes, yep, every every deck I play is uploaded to Mobilytics, and every deck I play is uploaded to YouTube, also. So there, you can find them both on Mobilytics or on YouTube. You're welcome. Alright, definitely not rewarded for not attacking. I thought I really thought about just passing, like how they didn't play anything, and just w waited for me to go to combat. I really thought about just passing, instead of getting that three damage in and not let them play anything afterwards. All right, let's go here. Um, 
Bounce this Ravenous Butcher. I kind of want to bounce the ra Ravenous Butcher and then have these die. No, let's probably just go over here. Because attacking with Zed just let them block with both Averroes and Sentry. So attacking with Zed just let them draw two cards and level up Callista. And I didn't want them just to level up Callista. Um, but they had a Ravenous Butcher, so they got to level up Callista anyway. Probably should have just passed. Hey, Lore. I, I should be blocking with something else and then doing this, but I kind of ran out of time. No, recalling Butcher is not that great of an idea with the Curse Keeper on board. They get the 4 4. Not a perfect idea, I'll admit. Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much. Really, what I, I should have done is just pass that turn and not let them play anything that turn. I feel like that's what I should have done. This is four. No, what do I? No, they're just gonna play the butcher and sacrifice that. Ugh. Go on Flimps beyond and sacrifice that. Yeah, I should have gone Callista. I was thinking like that's lethal, but they're just gonna sacrifice it. Alright, Zed's gonna die. But they have to block everything. I don't like how I played this. If I'd go back and, and do it all over again that, that other turn. I'd either attack with the Zed and the 4 4. I would rather, I'd either attack with them or just pass the turn. Wish I would have done either of those. And then, yeah, that, that combat last turn, I wish I would have done a little differently. Can I go down to three against them? 
I mean, it, Atrocity kills me, but there's not really much difference between 3 and 5 with Atrocity, because they have Callista. That 720 attack should have been uh, lethal. I didn't play that well. All right, anyway, moving forward. I'm pretty harsh on my play, and I, I try to I try to point out as many mistakes as I can just while I play, uh, to help uh, to help y'all. Um, you know, see different lines and stuff like that. Um, like that. Yeah, I'm showing them I have nothing to do with atrocity, but they're like they would if they have atrocity, they would be casting it before I attack them for lethal anyway, right? Like they wouldn't just take lethal without playing atrocity. So of course they have it. Of course they. Lose that. So both of those losses really felt like I should have won. Decisions I made it didn't work out. This deck felt really, really strong. Um, yeah, it definitely felt really strong. I just made made some judgment calls that ended up being the wrong judgment calls in both the losses. Um, but yeah, this this deck, uh, I, I really like Sejuani in here. Um, you know, with the Zed, definitely felt really strong. So, <clears throat> yeah, give this one, uh, yeah, give this one a try. You know, like if, you know, I, this is probably stronger than the Championless Elusives. You know, like I, I think that I like the Championless Elusives deck, which is basically the same thing, but no champions. But this is probably a stronger deck adding Zed and Sejuani to the deck. Um, yeah, it gives it gives it more power, um, and therefore probably it makes it better. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so yep, learn learning together. You know, that's that's the thing of um, what to do with those uh, judgment calls, and it's sound reasoning for them at the time. It's just. It ended up, um, you know, wish, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty, right? You know, like wish you could go back and, and change some of those moves, but that's okay. Um, do you need a mulligan hard for life blade against those Callista decks? Not at all. No, good, good question. No, I would not mulligan for life blade at all. This is still just this is just a two two life blade. I basically always mulligan life blade for the most part. I I basically never want life blade in the opener except for maybe against burn um but even against those callista decks no i wouldn't i wouldn't like life what makes life blade strong is jewel protector this is the combination that makes life blade really good um without without jewel protector life blade is is very weak um at four mana that's the combination you really want um against those against like that deck that we're just playing basically you want your normal thing you know you want omen hawk on turn one and you want conspirator to pick up omen hawk like that's you know like that's that's your combination that you need to, that you really want to find but that's that's the same combination you want to find against everybody is you want you want turn one omen hawk omen hawk uh growing all these elusives makes the rest of your deck so much better if there's any card you could pick in every single matchup in your opener it's omen hawk that's the card you want more than anything else All right, uh, so that's Zedjuani Elusives. Uh, those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Feel free to leave those comments. Give this one a try. Let me know how it goes. If you're playing the champion list deck, um, you know, and you've been acquiring your shards, you know, feel free to give this one a try because I know I think you start with two Zeds in your account anyway, right? So you can get a third Zed. So this will require four champions that you don't start with. So um, you know, hopefully you've been uh, trying this out. All right, but anyway, that's it here for Zedjuani Elusive. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.